like it! <laughs> Krusty is Springfield's beloved foul-mouthed cigar-chewing clown, and when he's not making shoddy merchandise or drinking blended money shakes, he's entertaining the town with his slapstick antics. The clown has had a pretty crazy life too, from faking his own death to running for Congress. In this video today, we'll explore his entire life, tracking his rise from a street mime to TV stardom. We'll also dive into his family woes, his many wives, his daughter, and his estranged relationship with his father. So come on, let's stop clowning around and get right into it, as this is the complete Krusty the Clown timeline. I heartily endorse this event or product. By the way, unlike Krusty's seal of approval, you know you'll get quality from this channel. So be sure to hit that subscribe button for more Simpsons content. Only a tiny portion of you who watch my videos are actually subscribed to the channel. And although it may not seem like such a big deal, it honestly really helps me out when you click that red button. So thank you. Anyway, back to the video. Krusty's Early Years Krusty the Clown, also known as... Uh, yeah, you're not gonna get me to pronounce that, sorry. But anyway, he was born to Hyman and Rachel Krustovsky. His father was a rabbi and heavily respected in the Jewish community where he grew up, so much so that people would approach his father to ask for some sage advice. Krusty's dream was to be an entertainer, but his father disapproved, so he kept his aspirations hidden. Until one day, his father walked in on him performing in the bathroom. Hey, you ball, close the door! Later on as a teen, Krusty sneaked out to perform as a clown. During one live show in which his father was in attendance, someone sprayed his face with water, causing his makeup to wash off. And Hyman was absolutely outraged, and so would go on to divide the pair for years. They would later reconcile, but more of that a bit later. Krusty also had a half-brother on his mother's side called Luke Perry, and Krusty absolutely loathed him. He was handsome and didn't have to hide behind really brightly coloured clown makeup, and so shot him out of a cannon, ploughing him through several different buildings, landing in a pillar factory, which is subsequently blown up by a demolition team. Krusty's show throughout the years so in show business, you have to start from somewhere, and Krusty started at the very bottom, working as a street mime in Mississippi, before jumping in his little clown car and journeying towards success in show business. He would get his very own talk show in the 60s, and it would go over several iterations throughout the decades. In the 70s, he even tried his hand at music. What was I on? Even though the success of his show has been faltered through certain Sideshow Bob, Gabbo and Sideshow Bob again, his show is still on air. With a little help from Bette Midler and the gang for Krusty's comeback special, she really was the wind beneath Krusty's wings. It seems that Krusty's time as a talk show host may have helped him build up an impressive contact list in the business of show, including Hugh Hefner and Johnny Carson. But as impressive as his phone book may be, one of the most shocking things on Krusty's show was suffering a heart attack live on air. And of course, everyone thought it was all part of the act, and as a result, he had a pacemaker put in, leaving him with a scar on his chest that he'll be burdened with throughout the show. Age 48, Movie Star Krusty's movie career is riding high after starring in Good Cop, Dog Cop. Dog Cop! <laughs> but when the producers want to start work on the sequel, Krusty says he won't sign anything until they make his passion project, an adaptation of his favourite book, The Sands of Space. Starring as the titular lead, they film the movie Down in Mexico. After the director quits due to Krusty's demands, he puts himself in charge, but quickly realises that he is well in over his head. I have no idea how to make a movie. Luckily, a young Marge and Homer are working on the movie as PAs. And Krusty soon hires Marge to be his assistant. Because of her leadership, filming does go well, but Krusty soon gets jealous of Homer, thinking he's taking up all of her time when she should be helping him. So he sends Homer out on dangerous errands, where he ends up getting kidnapped by the cartel. 
Marge offers Krusty's film rails in exchange for her homie. Although initially reluctant, Marge persuades Krusty to make the trade by quoting lines from his favourite book. Because of this failure, Krusty kept himself to a children's entertainer and vowed never to make anything good again. Later on in life, Krusty sneaks into a movie theatre in Mexico to find that his movie has become an unintentional, hilarious cult classic. Age 56, Becoming a Daddy During the Gulf War, Krusty performed as a USO show for the troops. It's here that he meets a pretty soldier named Erin, and they spend the night together, but Erin wakes up a bit too late for her mission to assassinate Saddam Hussein. Krusty feared that by taking out Hussein, a lot of his jokes about him would become obsolete, and so Krusty intervenes, ruining her mission and leading her to strangle him. For the next decade, Krusty would go on to forgetting about this little incident until a green-haired girl named Sophie showed up at his book signing stating that he was her father. I finally found my daddy! Ugh. Even though Krusty is a children's entertainer, it turns out that he knows nothing about them. As a whole, Krusty is pretty much an adult entertainer with a painted face. He tells crude jokes, does some dodgy dealings, and lives a pretty reckless lifestyle. Not the kind of guy to have a squeaky clean, kid-friendly image, which is probably why parenting didn't come too naturally to him. I'm not the kind of dad who, uh, you know, does things or says stuff or looks at you. And so, he reached out for the help of Springfield's father of the year, Homer Simpson. Well, they had to include The Simpsons in some way, didn't they? As a result, Krusty and his daughter would bond over ice creams and pony rides. At the end of the night, Sophie plays Krusty a song on her violin, reminding him of his childhood. When Krusty drops Sophie back at home, he is reunited with Erin and her artwork collection. Later on, it seems that Krusty still hasn't got the hang of fatherhood, betting his daughter's violin away during a poker game with mob boss Fat Tony. And naturally, he loses, which crushes Sophie when she finds out that her violin has gone. Up until this point throughout the show, Krusty has always been represented as a guy out for his own gain. His relationship with Bart seems very one-sided, using the boy on multiple occasions to get his success back, before not really being seen together until the clown fluffs it up again. Name? Hey, it's me, Bart! However, with the violin and his daughter upset, Krusty's shaken up and motivates to get it back from the mob boss. And so he succeeds, returning it to his daughter and in turn wins back her love. And unfortunately, even after he goes through all of this effort, he doesn't get a generous custody agreement. I only get one week of custody once a year. But he's still trying his best to be a good father, letting his daughter play the French horn live on air and going for a sleigh ride on Christmas. Age 65, present day. So, let's discuss Krusty's questionable age. On the Simpsons wiki page, it lists him as 52. And while this is usually my holy gospel when it comes to Simpsons facts, I'm not too sure on this. There's a lot of contradictions, which is to be expected from a show with over 700 episodes, with writers changing of hands every couple of seasons. It's mentioned a few times throughout the show that Krusty has had a 50-year showbiz career, meaning that he would be in his mid to late 60s at least. And seeing as Krusty looked around 15 when he first started performing, I'm going to go ahead and put his age as 65, but this is no way set in stone. Just like most celebrities, Krusty has had a string of failed marriages, 15 to be precise. He's been hitched so many times that there's even a reality TV show called The Real Ex-Wives of Krusty. Now, let's discuss his rocky relationship with his father, Rabbi Hyman. The two have been estranged since his father discovered him on stage all those years ago. But throughout, Krusty has always missed his papa. And ever his saviours, when things get a little rough, Bart and Lisa help heal the rift between them. At first, they try to use Judaic teachings to change his mind, but the rabbi always has a retort. Until they quote the wise words of Sammy Davis Jr., a Jewish entertainer much like his son. This finally convinces him and he finally reconciles with his son. A proud Krusty then shows up his dad to his audience live on air. 
but Krusty still feels like he's missed out on their relationship as well as his Jewish roots, so he asks his father's help to get his bar mitzvah. Seeing it as a way to celebrate Judaism while making some cash at the same time, he turns his bar mitzvah into an extravagant live event. But his father naturally disapproves, believing he is making a mockery of their faith. Later on, Krusty decides to have a real bar mitzvah in a temple. And so showing that at the end of the day, Krusty really values his father's opinion, the one person he was always so eager to please. A bit later on, when Krusty is wounded by a comedy roast, he turns to his father and asks if he thinks he's funny. And the rabbi replies, If you want to know my honest opinion of you, you've always been... Eh. Before quickly passing away. Obviously distraught by his dad's opinions, Krusty quits show business. But it's Bart Simpson that once again saves the day, revealing that his father actually loved his jokes, just not the delivery of them. My father respected me, but could never tell me. Krusty's had many ups and downs during his illustrious career. When his TV ratings plummeted because of the Gabbo show, his show was cancelled before coming back in an all-star comeback special. And another time he left his show was to fake his own death in order to avoid the IRS. When it's revealed that Krusty has been one of the biggest tax cheats in history, he loses everything. His mansion and all of his earthly possessions are subsequently sold off. Mo even buys his bed, and I can't even wrap my head around the horrors he would do in that. To escape his crippling debt, he fakes his own death in spectacular fashion, flying an airplane into a mountain but jumping out just at the last moment. He then lives under a new identity of Rory B. Bellows. Now making a living as a salvager, Bart and Lisa track him down and confront him. Although initially reluctant to return to his old life, they manage to convince him to come back to show business. When he jumps into the sea, his yellow makeup washes off to reveal his pale face, and in the process blows up his boat to claim the insurance. Let's talk about Krusty's makeup for a moment. Or is it even makeup? That's the real question. When Krusty suffered his heart attack, it was implied that this caused his face to turn white. This ain't makeup! But in the season 29 episode, Fears of a Clown, he has a yellow face, so who knows at this point? On a few occasions, Krusty has ditched his clowning around, once trying his hand at observational stand-up, and even gave serious acting a go. But the ghost of the clown always lingered around to fill him with self-doubt. You'll never get rid of me. You'll always be a self-hating clown. His need to make people laugh with slapstick would always win out, and he would always return back to his clownish roots. Krusty has also seemed to have taken a page from other entertainers and entered politics at one point. To be honest, Congress and Parliament, no matter where you are in the world, are full of loads of freaking clowns anyway, so why not throw another one in there? Instead of entering politics with the goal of helping people, he instead does it to get the IRS and FCC off his back. But what else can you expect from politicians, eh? Alright, I'll leave them alone now. His campaign gets a lot of support too, appealing to the common folk and talking in nonsensical clown babble. Wacka, wacka, wacka. Wow, wow. <laughs> Krusty wins the election and becomes a congressman, and he tries his absolute best to make do on his promises to the people, but none of the other congressmen listen to him. But with a little blackmail and getting a southern congressman drunk, his bill passes. And as far as we're aware, Krusty is a congressman. Age 73. As a serial dater, Krusty has found future wife number 16 when he starts dating Marge. Krusty the Clown is dating your mom! At this point, Homer and Marge have separated for the hundredth time, and after being with a clown for the past 30 years, she thought she'd try out the real thing. But I'll tell you one thing, Marge definitely has a type, as the two look incredibly similar. I'm seeing double here. Four Krusties! While on a date at a baseball game, Homer confronts the pair and proceeds to get into a fight with Krusty. After Homer is beaten up by the clown, he and Marge get back together again. 
age 95. Even in his twilight years, Krusty is still on air, but he looks a little tired of it all. But over the kinky clown, he perks right up when it's revealed that he had an orgy with an adult Bart Simpson and an entourage of clowns. Seeing as Krusty was Bart's childhood hero, this is all kind of messed up. But seeing as this scene was all a simulation, I guess it didn't happen, but still, ugh. And so on that really strange note, that ends the Krusty the Clown timeline. I would like to end this video by saying a huge thank you to my newest Flying Hellfish members. We have Thomas88, Dave Upton, Samantha Rose and Rally Mitchell. And of course, a big thank you to my Flying Hellfish unit. We have Timothy, who else but Zane, Liam, Charlie, Sean, Andre, Stefan, Vincent, Robert, Ashley, Kevin, Glenford, Devin, Gadrak, Stephen, Edward, Anthony, Nicola, Nerd Centric, Jeffrey, Dominic, Cody, Aaron, Jacku Star, Game Boss 49, Chaz, Jeff, Gil, Shadu, Murray, Paul, Oliver, Henry, Frank, Lucas, Emily, Omar, Cruise Life Eric, Rally Thomas88, Dave and Samantha Rose.